Shiny Pokemon. They're obviously one of the most popular things about the franchise, and it's easy to see why. The concept is really cool, and some of the colorations of Shiny Pokemon look absolutely incredible. What you may or may not be surprised to know, however, is that there is some additional meaning to the colors behind some shiny Pokemon, and in today's video, we are going to explore the secret meanings of these shiny colors for 25 Pokemon in particular. You might remember that I covered this same topic a while back in a previous video, but the Pokemon and facts I am highlighting today are all brand new. So without further ado, let's go ahead and check it out. Going in no particular order, let's begin first with Staryu, because why not? Looking at Staryu's shiny form, it is likely colored the way that it is because its shiny colors resemble that of a star in the night sky, which leans into Staryu's star theme all that much more, which is really cool. Another Pokemon that comes from Kanto, meanwhile, is Nidoran, both male and female, and the cool thing about their shinies is that, with the exception of Nidoqueen, both of these Pokemon and their evolutions use the opposite's standard colors as their shiny colors, meaning that Nidoran male becomes blue, like Nidoran female, and vice versa. Another pair of Pokemon that seem to be connected to one another in this way are Dedenne and Alolan Raichu. Now, these Pokemon have a distant relationship to one another, as Dedenne is a Pikachu clone and Alolan Raichu is, of course, the evolution of Pikachu. Whether this is pure coincidence or is intentional is unknown, but these two Pokemon share near identical color palettes in both their regular and shiny forms, sporting an orange and light yellow color scheme normally, and a dark brown color for their shiny. And since we've just creeped into the Alola side of things with Alolan Raichu, let's go ahead and take a look at some more shinies from this generation. Both of this gen's box art legendaries, Sokaleo and Lunala, have a cool hidden meaning with their shinies, as Sogaleo turns a harsh red color, which appears to allude to a sunburn, because it's the sun Pokemon. And Lunala, meanwhile, becomes a bloody red color, which is most likely in reference to a blood moon, which is a well-known term that refers to a total lunar eclipse, due to the way that the moon turns red at this time. These two aren't the only legendaries with something more to their shiny forms, however, as Ho-Oh also has a shiny that most likely has a deeper meaning, and a very cool one at that. Ho-Oh, in its shiny form, primarily becomes gold and gray in color, or if you prefer, gold and silver likely as a symbolic reference to Pokemon Gold and Silver, the games in which Ho-Oh debuted. Given that Ho-Oh was also the first Johto Pokemon to be revealed to the public, it also has kind of been a mascot for this entire generation, along with being the box art legendary for Pokemon Gold specifically, which just makes this potential reference with its shiny colors all the more likely. Johto has more to offer aside from just Ho-Oh, though. Sudo Wudo is a pretty iconic Johto Pokemon, and its shiny is clearly based on fall colors and the changing of the leaves, seeing as how Sudo Wudo pretends to be a tree itself as a form of camouflage. Additionally, there are other Pokemon who are actually trees who also do this too, such as Phantump and Trevenant. Along with their leaves though, these Pokemon's bodies also turn a white color as well, which sort of falls in line with trees shutting down for the winter by the time fall comes around. 
In comparison, Sudo Wudo doesn't really do anything like this itself, which kinda connects both of these Pokemon together and just helps to add to the idea that Sudo Wudo is a fake tree just that much more. That part of it might be just a coincidence, but it's still cool as heck, so it definitely counts as far as I'm concerned. You know what actually also comes from trees, though? Chestnuts. And the Chespin family are all based on chestnuts. This is most likely why they have the colors that they do in their shiny forms, as the reddish brown of their shinies is very consistent with actual chestnuts. Meanwhile, the other Kalos starters have additional meanings to their shinies as well, as Fennekin and its family are possibly a play on the term Silver Fox, which is kind of ironic since that term typically refers to men, while the Fennekin line are more feminine in nature, but overall it still fits well. Lastly, we have Shiny Greninja, whose black coloration is obviously a reference to ninjas, which it is based on. From starter Pokemon to now regional forms, hidden meanings within Shinies can even come if the Pokemon in question is a variant. Take for instance Alolan Grimer and Muck. Their shiny colors are clearly based on Cantonian Grimer and Muck, which is pretty cool, and this same concept has also been used for multiple other regional variants as well, including the Galarian Legendary Birds, whose shinies look like the Cantonian forms of these Pokémon, the Hisuian forms of the starters from Legends Arceus, who in their shiny form all take on the colors of their original appearance, and the shiny of Galarian Meowth might also be inspired by the colors of its original Cantonian form as well. Additionally, Hisuian Voltorb and Electrode gain a black coloration in their shiny, which, given their connection to Pokeballs, could have a connection to the black Apricorn, which can be made into a Heavy Ball, which is one of the Pokeballs that is available in Legends Arceus and is also one of the most prominent. This shiny being based on another variant of a Pokeball is also consistent with the shinies of the original forms of these Pokemon doing the exact same thing with the Great Ball, which makes it all the more plausible. Finally, rounding out the regional variants in this video is gonna be Hisuian Avalug, whose tusks become an orange color in its shiny, which oddly seems to match up with the rest of its body in its regular form. Since Hisuian Avalug is less icy than its original Kalosian form, this almost feels like Hisuian Avalug is adapting even further and embracing the rocky traits that it has picked up while it continues to abandon the icy traits of its original form, almost as if we are seeing the evolution of this species play out right before our very eyes. Before regional variants were walking the earth and became the coolest thing imaginable, we had the Pokemon of Hoenn, and a pair of those are Nummel and Camerupt. These two become grey colored in their shiny forms, which due to these Pokemon being inspired by volcanoes, might be in reference to dormant volcanoes. The reason I mention this is because it's actually pretty similar to another shiny that I covered in that previous video I mentioned earlier, and that would be Slugma. Its shiny is also grey and is in reference to chilled or cooled lava, which is a very similar concept, so since this kind of thing was already going on in Generation 2, I figured a similar thing might also be going on with Nummel and Camerupt in Generation 3. Meanwhile, we've also got some more Gen 7 mons to cover, starting first with Passimian. Passimian's shiny changes its colors to make it appear even more like a football player. Sandygast and Palosan's shinies are based on black sand, which is really cool, especially because there are black sand beaches in Hawaii, which Alola is based on. 
Mimikyu is yet another Alola Pokemon with a cool shiny as well. As it becomes gray to represent the black and white era of the Game Boy that Pokemon first debuted on, since its design obviously has a lot to do with Pikachu and how popular it became during this time frame when Pokemon first released. Finally, to finish off Gen 7, Zeraora is another Alola Mon who becomes white in its shiny form, and due to Zeraora's feline appearance, this could possibly be based on white tigers. We've got just three more Pokemon to cover here now, and we've saved the most recent for last, at least until Scarlet and Violet come out anyway. Galar introduced a bunch of cool Pokemon, and one of them is Wooloo. It's literally just a sheep, but it's adorable nevertheless, and both it and its evolution become black in their shiny forms, referencing the term black sheep, which typically refers to someone who is odd or out of place within a group. Another great set of Pokemon from this region are Applin and its evolutions, and I bet you can't guess what the meaning is behind their shinies. Yep, you guessed it, they're green, because British people really like the color green, and also Ireland is kinda over there, and they love the color green because of St. Patrick's Day. Oh, and also because of green apples, yeah, yeah, that might actually be the reason why. And last but not least, we have Graplocked, who in its shiny clearly becomes modeled after a luchador, which is a really clever roundabout way of referencing this Pokemon's inspiration, as it is inspired by octopus wrestling, a sport which was somewhat popular in the US in the 1960s. And there you have it! What did you think about all these hidden meanings? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe if you're new for more content. You can also check out my Pokemon remixes on Spotify if you'd like to further support the channel, as it is massively appreciated and really makes a huge difference. With that said, I'll be back with another new video very soon, and until then as always, thank you all so much for watching this one, I love you guys, and I will smell you guys later.